Okay, well, um, I had a couple questions about problems from section 6.3 on the, uh, the problems involving cross-sectional areas of logs and the strength of logs. So um, I think these were the last two questions from the homework. Um, I've had several questions on these two problems, so I'm just going to go ahead and make a video for them, and uh, you can view solutions in this way. I'm not going to use any particular diagonal length D. I'm not going to use any particular angle theta. Uh, that way it, this is sort of tailored to your specific problem. You just have to plug in the correct D. So um, so in the problem, what you're given is sort of two pictures of a log, and so I've, I've drawn sort of an oval here, an ellipse, and uh, inside it I've placed a rectangle. Okay, And you can think about uh, you know what a, what a woodworker does. They take a, a log and they turn it into a big beam, uh, and those are those beams might be used to support a house. In fact, if you can, I don't know if you can see right behind me inside my house, uh, right right there in the corner of the house, you can see the main support beam that runs across the entire uh, length of this basement. Um, and that is, oh, I think it's something like um, six inches wide, and I think it's something like 12 inches tall. Um, and it, it's multiple, it's multiple, um, two by twelves just all nailed and screwed together and so um, this this is a very applicable type of question um, that you might as an engineer you know concern yourself with when when designing uh, the way in which a, a house or a building should be built um, you want to make sure that you've got sufficient strength uh, in that support beam or in the support beams throughout the house um, or building so here we go. So how do you compute the, in this first question, how do you compute the area of the inscribed rectangle? Um, so it's kind of a, you know, strange question. Um, uh, but you think about this in terms of, uh, I say it's strange because if you cut the beam, then you can clearly measure the height and the width and just multiply and you've got the area. Um, but what if, uh, what if you have the tree there instead? Well, then what you can do is, you know, draw a radius across the uh, across the tree and measure that. That's your distance D, the diagonal distance D. Okay, and then what you could also do is form, you know, some edge. Like you've got your, you've got your tree. So first you, you find like, hmm, you know, some, some radius or some di diameter here. And then what you do is say you want this to be one side of the, the timber that you're going to make. Well, then all you got to do is measure this angle, measure this diameter, and then you're going to essentially with this formula find the cross-sectional area of this beam that would be created. And that's going to change depending on uh, that diagonal that you choose, right? So I'll try and keep this the same, more or less. If I chose instead, like, this diameter, right? This is a very odd one, but I could then say, "Hey, I want this to be the base of my um, my my log or my my timber that I'll make." So I measure this diagonal and I measure this angle, and that's all I need to know in order to find. <laughs> this one's really strange because I drew it right in the middle. Uh, this looks like a right angle. This will tell me. How, how much area I'm going to have there. So this might be a better way to make two small pieces of timber and what have you. But this is this is a way of sort of determining before you've cut anything um, the cross-sectional area of the timber that you'll be able to get out of that log. Okay, so, you know, they always say measure twice, cut once. So this is, this is, the, this is an important step. It's before you've cut the tree itself for the timber, measure it out. So uh, let's go ahead and do this. It, it, it's not too bad. Um, we're going to keep d and theta as variables. We don't know what they are. Uh, I'm going to use um, a to represent the area. And uh, this area is obviously the area of a rectangle. So we need to know the width of this rectangle, which is, I'm going to just label w. And instead of using d, because that's already used for the diagonal in your problem, 
I'm going to I'm going to have to write the word depth, or I'm going to have to assign a different variable to that. Okay, it doesn't matter what you choose, just something to represent the depth. So now let's think about these things in terms of the triangle that we've got here and the trig functions that we know. So this is a right triangle and uh, the different trig functions that we know sine, cosine, tangent relate this angle to ratios of these three sides w, depth, and diagonal. So let's, let's focus first on w. The width here, w, is the adjacent side to this angle and that should spark in your mind cosine. I know cosine of that angle is equal to the adjacent side w over the diagonal d. That's the hypotenuse. So what does that mean about w? w is equal to d times cosine theta. Okay. Uh, now let's think about this opposite side. You see across from theta is this depth side. So that should spark in your brain since it's the opposite side, the sine of theta. Sine of theta is equal to the opposite side, depth, divided by w, uh, excuse me, divided by the diagonal, d. Okay? We can rearrange that to say, hey, depth is equal to d sine theta. So we've got the width of the rectangle times the depth of the rectangle. And we see that this, just through some reordering of this multiplication, is just d squared, whatever that diagonal length is, times sine times cosine, or times cosine times sine. I don't think it really matters what order you put this in on WebAssign, but it might. So, so in your problem, you're given a specific diameter. So just plug that number in, square it. And then you could try cosine, cosine theta, sine theta. If it doesn't like that, flip the order to sine theta, cosine theta. Okay. The other problem uh, that it, that was people were having questions with um, was uh, the next one. So it says the strength of a beam is proportional to the width and the square of the depth. The strength of a beam is proportional to the width and the square of the depth. So what do we have here? We, we've got most of this. So now let's write down a formula for the strength. So now we know this is going to be proportional, which means there's going to be some constant, k. And they say use k as our proportionality constant. So there's going to be some number, which you could think of as like a percentage. Um, if it's less than one, or you can think of it as like a multiplier um, if it's bigger than one. Which means some constant times the things that it said, so that the the width and the square of the depth. Okay, so width and depth squared. There's gonna be some multiplier that sort of adjusts the product of these two things. Um, in order to correctly uh, uh, measure the strength or calculate the strength. This is a pretty common thing. You know, if, if I say uh, uh, there's a proportionality between one ingredient to another in a recipe, if there's a certain proportion, that means there's something like a two to one ratio. That means K is one or one half, whichever way you're thinking about it. Um, so that, that's the idea of this, this proportionality constant here. So I, I think I've got it all written down here. Uh, it's, the strength is proportional to, so there's a multiplier of the width and the square of the depth. So from the preceding problem, we've got functions for those. What is the width? That's d cosine theta. Okay, The drawing is exactly the same. So this is going to be the same as what we had before. And uh, the depth is d sine theta but that has to be squared. So here's what we get. We get d cosine theta, oops, sorry, k times d cosine theta times d sine theta squared. 
So we just simplify this a little bit. Uh, we distribute across this product the square, right? D, it, it's d times sine theta, so we can uh, distribute that power. And then we'll get d squared sine squared. And then I'll rearrange all of the d's. So k times d cubed, that's the two multiplied together here, and the mul one multiplied together here, giving us three d's multiplied together. Um, and then times cosine theta times sine squared theta. You can write that two different ways. When you're writing it out by hand, that's usually what you write. If you're not, like on a computer, what you will sometimes write for this is in parentheses sine of theta squared. And that makes sure that you're not accidentally thinking of it like this, which might mean, depending on how you look at this, it might mean square the angle first and then take the sine of it. Whereas this says, take the sine of the angle, then square the result. So um, whichever way you write it in, um, as sine squared theta like this, I think WebAssign will understand that. Uh, if it doesn't, try it this way. And if it doesn't like cosine times sine theta squared, then try sine theta squared times cosine theta. And again, you'll have your own diameter here. So whatever that, whatever that measurement is, 20, 43, 51, you just plug that in and, and figure out d cubed. Okay, you can use a calculator to do that. You don't have to do that out longhand. Just use a, a grandpa or grandma calculator that just has a multiplication button if you need, and that's fine. Okay, so uh, that's it for this problem and the next problem uh, that I had quite a few questions on. If you have more questions about this, don't hesitate to ask again. But that's it. I hope it helps. So I'll see you next time.